Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on OpenAI Deep Research. In this video, we will dive into the powerful capabilities of OpenAI's Deep Research. This AI-powered agent is designed to assist you with in-depth, multi-step research, which has become a game-changer for those needing comprehensive data analysis. In this video, we are going to explore how Deep Research stands apart from traditional browsing tools, the underlying technology that powers it, and also the practical applications. So guys, watch this video till the end if you want to know more about it. But before I move on, just a quick info guys. Simply Learn has got Artificial Intelligence Engineer Master Program in collaboration with IBM. In this program, you are going to learn a recognized AI engineer certification, which is going to help you boost your career. Then you are going to learn about machine learning, NLP, deep learning, generative AI, and many more. You are going to master in AI by doing the real world projects using the industry aligned tools. And finally, you are going to earn IBM certificates. And also, you are going to get benefited from the master classes by the IBM experts. So guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. So let's get started. So let's start with first understanding definition and purpose of OpenAI's deep research. OpenAI's deep research is actually an advanced AI powered agent, which is designed to conduct in-depth research by browsing the web and analyzing multiple sources. Unlike regular chat GPT, which generates quick responses based on the training data, deep research autonomously performs multi-step investigation, referencing various sources and synthesizes large amount of information into structured reports. It is specifically built to assist users in tasks that require comprehensive, fact-checked and well-organized data such as professional reports, competitive analysis, and detailed research projects. Now, you would be wondering how deep research differs from standard chat GPT browsing. So, first of all, let us understand this in parameters. Basically, deep research is designed for comprehensive and multi-step investigations. Whereas, if I talk about chat GPT, its browsing provides quick, often brief responses to user queries. Deep research takes time to browse multiple sources, gather data, analyze it iteratively, and produce well-organized structured reports. It is essentially mimicking the process where a researcher would undertake when diving into a complex topic, ensuring that each piece of information is checked, synthesized, and properly referenced. Whereas, if I talk about ChatGPT browsing, on the other hand, it delivers instant replies based on most relevant information it can pull from its knowledge base, making it more suited for casual questions or quick clarifications, but less effective for detailed research tasks. Whereas if I talk about structured versus casual output, then deep research focuses on delivering structured, organized outputs, whereas chat browsing tends to offer more casual and unstructured responses. Let us discuss about a deep research first. So, if I talk about deep research, guys, it ensures that its output is well organized and often it uses headings, bullet points and clear citations to make researcher easier to follow. The responses are intended to resemble detailed reports that researcher or analyst might produce with proper structured and references to the sources it has used. Whereas if I talk about chat GPT browsing, guys, it provides quicker answers which are not always neatly organized or as thoroughly referenced. The information is delivered as a conversational reply and may not always include clear citations, making it less suitable for users who require detailed documentation. And finally, we have iterative refinement and tool uses. If we talk about deep research, guys, it utilizes iterative process where it can refine its finding by revisiting information as it proceeds with the research. And this iterative approach allows it to build a more accurate and reliable output over the time. Whereas if I talk about chat GPT browsing, in comparison to deep research, it does not refine its answers in the same manner. Once the browsing tool fetches a response, that's typically the final answer provided. It lacks ongoing adjustment of information based on further exploration making it less adaptable in handling complex or multi-layered queries. 
So these parameters show us that how deep research is designed for complex research habitats that require in-depth analysis and cross-referencing of data. Whereas ChatGPT browsing is more suited for quick answers and in more general queries. Now, let us try to understand target users and specific use cases. So deep research is actually aimed at professional researchers, business analysts, students, and even consumers. But its primary users include researcher and students for gathering detailed information on complex subjects, creating reports and supporting academic research, researcher and student utilize it more. Next comes business analyst and strategist. They perform competitive analysis, market research and trend forecasting. So for that purpose, it is used a lot. Next is shoppers and consumers. Especially deep research is useful for making significant purchasing decisions such as buying cars or real estate by analyzing reviews, prices, and specifications, which is very helpful in these scenarios. And finally, we have journalists and writers. Those needing fact-checked, multi-source insights for writing detailed articles and report, it is very useful for journalists and writers, and they are using it extensively. The tool is designed for anyone who needs to process multiple sources, cross-reference information, and create structured reports on topics that are difficult or time consuming to research manually. Now, let us try to understand the underlying technology, the O3 model and reinforcement learning approach. OpenAI's deep research is actually powered by the O3 model, which is a highly specialized model designed specifically for web. This cutting edge model goes beyond traditional AI paradigms, making it ideal for handling complex research tasks that require gathering information from multiple sources, synthesizing it, and providing structured insights. Let's dive deeper into how O3 model and reinforcement learning contribute to these capabilities. So first of all, let us try to understand what exactly is O3 model. So O3 model is an evolution of OpenAI's model, specifically designed for tasks that require iterative reasoning, web browsing, synthesis of information from diverse sources. Unlike its predecessors, the O3 model is built to handle complex, multi step research tasks where quick responses aren't sufficient. It is optimized to perform tasks such as browsing the web to collect diverse data. Okay, then uh, you could also use for synthesizing that data which is coherent and also generating structured approach. Then you could go for cross-referencing information from various sources to ensure accuracy. And finally, adapting to new information as it's gathered to improve quality of the output. This model is actually designed to handle high demands of the modern research where AI needs to understand and process information across wide range of subjects and also sources, making it far more capable than simpler models that rely on pre-existing knowledge alone. Next. Let us talk a bit about reinforcement learning here, which is a key ingredient in deep research. So the O3 model utilizes reinforcement learning, which is a technique that involves training AI through interaction with environment, where it learns to make decisions based on rewards and feedback. In context to deep research, reinforcement learning is used to iterate on the research task. The AI is trained to go through multiple steps, like conducting research, instead of simply looking for revisiting the answers. And also, this approach is very amazing because it continues searching based on the new information it uncovers. Next is, it improves synthesis and decision making. As AI interacts with the data, it learns which sources are most reliable and what information is relevant and how to structure its finding to provide more useful and accurate results. This allowed deep research to continuously improve its ability to generate high quality outputs through feedback loops. Next, it learns from past experiences. With each research task, the AI gains insight into how to refine its methodology and become more efficient at processing and synthesizing information. This learning process enables deep research to adapt complex queries and provide more detailed and nuanced answers over the time. Now you'll be wondering how reinforcement learning is actually enhancing web browsing and data analysis. So 
Reinforcement learning actually allows deep research to evolve into more reliable and effective tool for web browsing. So first of all, if we talk about data exploration and exploitation balance, when deep research starts a task, it may explore various possible sources for its answers. But however, through reinforcement learning, it eventually learns which source tend to provide most valuable or reliable information for a specific query. And this ability to balance exploration, which is looking for new data, and exploitation, which means relying on known good sources, ensures that it optimizes the research process over the time. Next one we have is dynamic adaptation to new information. In real world research, new insights or contradicting information may emerge as like more data is gathered. With reinforcement learning, deep research can continuously adapt its strategy based on what it uncovers, refine the quality of its responses. If a new piece of evidence comes to light that contradicts an earlier assumption, the model can revise its finding, ensuring that the research report reflects the most up-to-date and accurate information. And finally, guys, it has real-time feedback loop. As AI completes different stages of the research process, it gets immediate feedback on its performance. And this feedback informs the next step in the investigation, allowing it to fine-tune its approach. For example, if it discovers a mismatch between two sources, it can re-examine the conflicting information, adjust its conclusion, and provide a more accurate synthesis. So now guys, I hope so you would have got a brief idea like how reinforcement learning is actually enhancing web browsing and data analysis. Now let's try to move ahead and understand some of the practical application. So the ability of O3 model to carry out complex reasoning tasks is very, very much crucial for practical applications. For example, when tasked with researching a highly technical topic, deep research doesn't just summarize the first few pages it finds on the web. It gathers data from multiple authoritative sources, compares the information, and produces a structured output that distills the essential finding. First one, we have cross-referencing across multiple sources. Unlike simpler models that may pull data from a single source, row 3 model checks various sources for consistency, thereby reducing the chances of errors due to misinformation. For example, when asked about latest advancement in AI, Deep research might check academic papers, reputable tech blogs, and news articles to compile an answers that integrates multiple perspectives, offering a more comprehensive understanding. Next, if we talk about complex inferences, the reinforcement learning aspect of the O3 model allows deep research to draw more complex inferences. It doesn't simply take information at face value. It makes educated guesses, checks the consistency of those guesses, and refines its conclusion to produce a more accurate synthesis. So this is how like deep research is actually working guys. Now we have got a brief idea regarding this. Now let's move ahead and try to understand the detailed benchmark results. So deep research has been rigorously tested against multiple benchmarks showcasing its capabilities in web-based research tasks. The first one that we are going to talk about is called Humanity's Last Exam, which is a benchmark that evaluates AI's ability to answer expert level questions across diverse fields. Now, deep research achieved an impressive 26.6% of accuracy, surpassing the previous models such as GPT-40, which has 3.3% accuracy, and Claude 3.5 has 4.3% accuracy. The biggest improvements were observed in chemistry, humanities, social sciences, and mathematics, demonstrating its ability to retrieve authoritative, specialized knowledge from the web sources. Now, if I talk about the next one, we have General AI Agent. This benchmark assesses an AI's proficiency across reasoning, web browsing, and multimodal fluency. Deep Research has set a new record on General AI Agent Level 3 tasks which requires complex, multi-step research and synthesis. Its PASS A1 and CONS A64 scores were the highest ever recorded, indicating that even initial answers were more accurate than previous models. Now, these benchmarks actually highlight deep research ability to handle complex cross-disciplinary tasks, making it an outstanding tool for deep, fact-based research. So guys, after discussing all of these things, you would have got a brief idea what were the strengths of deep research. So let us just 
cover them one by one. So first one, it does a comprehensive research. Then it has a very accurate synthesis. It has a tool proficiency, meaning that the model is iterative, okay, and is allows to refine its result over time, ensuring that you know it answers improve with additional data. It is highly scalable, and it has the ability to handle complex disciplinary topics. Next one, let us discuss a bit about limitations of deep research. Now, this is very very much important for us to discuss, guys. So. If I talk about the limitations of deep research, so the first one that comes up to my mind is inaccurate information. While it performs well overall, but deep research sometimes produces incorrect facts, outdated information, and incomplete answers, especially on topics requiring real-time data. So just be cautious with it. Next is dependence on available sources. So the model's effectiveness is actually limited by quality and availability of web sources. Propriety or niche information that isn't publicly accessible could lead to errors or incomplete research. Now, the next one is limited understanding of highly contextual or nuanced queries. Deep research may face challenges when dealing with highly contextual or nuanced queries. While it excels as gathering and synthesizing factual data, but understanding complex, subjective, or culturally nuanced queries can be a limitation. For example, a research task that requires deep understanding of human emotions, subjective experiences, or cultural context may not yield optimal results from deep research. The model may lack a depth of understanding necessary to interpret information or provide insights that require emotional intelligence or sophisticated judgment. Its strength lies in analyze objective data, but for questions that require human touch or deep interpretive skills, deep research may fall short. Next is limited adaptability. While deep research performs well in many areas, but it can struggle with fields that involve highly specialized jargon or niche terminology. For example, in highly technical fields like advanced quantum physics or specialized medical research, deep research may not always be able to fully grasp the nuanced terminology or specific context of such subjects. So guys, this can be one of the other limitation. And finally, we have over-reliance. Deep research heavily depends on credibility of sources it accesses. While it can pull data from various websites, the quality and reliability of its output are directly tied to the trustworthiness of the sources. If the sources it retrieves data from are biased or unreliable or inaccurate, the results will likely reflect those issues. For instance, if a query involves pulling data from forums, social media, or other less reliable sources, deep research may inadvertently include inaccurate or biased information in its report. Although it tries to cross-reference and verify data, but it is still vulnerable to these issues, especially when reliable sources are scarce or difficult to verify in context of a broader query. So guys, these were some of the limitations of deep research. So guys, that was all for today's video on OpenAI's deep research. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.